Okay. So let me wrap this up with this traditional karate thing. As I've said, 1975, there was a full contact bare knuckle tournament. Karate, boxing, Muay Thai, Burmese boxing, Kung Fu, all showed up. All four divisions were won by lightweight, happy roll by Crump, middleweight, Earl Bennett, light heavyweight, Fred Miller, heavyweight was split between Earl Thompson and David Wells. All of them karate, all right? I also point out the function of the gi. The function of the gi is not to walk around looking deadly. A lot of people wear those paper gis. That's a part of sport karate. That's a part of this small karate that people like me totally hate. This is a heavyweight gi. This gi right here is heavyweight canvas. Got it? This is a gi. All right, fills with sweat. It can weigh as much as six, seven, eight pounds. Okay? I use this to train people to use this. Okay? Okay, got it? All right, that's what it's for. Now, let's talk about some hypocrisy. I think it's a bit hypocritical for many of you to criticize traditional karate. When a lot of you are falling over yourselves and falling over your televisions and falling over your children and falling over your bookcases and your stereos trying to learn the straight back kick that George, P uh, George St. Pierre made so popular. Newsflash. The straight back kick comes from traditional karate. Japanese karate. It comes from traditional karate. Not Muay Thai, not wrestling, not boxing, not Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. The straight back kick that many of you were trying to emulate, almost knocking yourselves out trying to do it, comes from traditional karate. If you don't believe traditional karate works, then you should not be trying to learn the straight back kick. Okay. Next. Anderson Silva, you may recall, knocked out Victor Belfort or collapsed his knees uh, en route to knocking him out with some punches, I believe, after that, but collapsed his knees with a traditional front kick. A front kick. That is not a Muay Thai kick. So don't try to say it is. Look at how Muay Thai kicks. Look at how uh, Anderson Silva threw his kick. Anderson Silva used a basic front kick that is taught in traditional Japanese karate. Ball of the foot to the chin, front kick. Okay? Something else to say about that kick, in case you didn't know. That particular kick is a white belt kick. Now, white belts obviously can't use it. I hope you know they can't use it like Anderson Silva did. But it is a white belt kick that is taught to you in the first 30 days of your lessons in karate, if that instructor is worth anything. Okay? So we're not talking about an advanced kick that Anderson Silva used against Victor Belfort. We are talking about one of the first kicks, if not the first kick, that your five-year-old would learn if you enrolled him in a school that's worth going to. Okay? A basic kick. If you were trying to use that kick, if you were using that kick in the street, in the cage, just playing, just goofing around, just monkeying around, if you're using that kick, then you need to stop if you think, Traditional karate is not effective because that essentially comes not only from traditional karate, but is a basic kick, one of the first kicks you learn in traditional karate. Okay? So many of you talking about traditional karate, and traditional karate is not this. Again, to reiterate, I am talking about karate as it was taught to me in the 60s and the 70s. Okay? That's what I'm talking about. Where it was the way it was taught by very, very tough people from very, very tough areas. That is what I'm talking about. I am not talking about the martial arts you are talking about or you see today. Okay? Two, let's understand what the gi is. It is not something that you would just, you just love to walk around in to feel deadly. The gi helps you to manipulate clothing. And since most people in most parts of the places, in many parts of the world, at most parts, most times in the year, wear clothes, you need to learn how to manipulate clothes instead of standing up there trading punches back and forth. If you can choke somebody unconscious, why would you be bruising up your hands on somebody's cranium? Okay? Let's also look at when hardcore karate was pitted up against other styles. At times when hardcore karate, that as it was practiced in the 60s and 70s, was pitted up against other styles, most times hardcore karate did win. So, I hope that that will suffice. I hope you get my point. 
uh, I will be actually doing a, a seminar, uh, God willing, uh, in the, uh, before, the, uh, before the new year, uh, hosted by Black Ninja. Uh, and uh, I will be going over mixed martial arts, uh, bouncing uh, techniques, security techniques. Also, I will show people how to manipulate uh, clothing. Uh, I will have my gi top on for the last hour of the seminar. Uh, and I will show you who comes with jackets because it, it will be a little chilly. You come with jackets, I will be showing you uh, the function of the jacket uh, as how it is taught when I have people who have geese. All right? Lastly, I love the mixed martial arts. I don't want you to think I don't love the mixed martial arts. I do teach the mixed martial arts. I have videos where I'm supporting the UFC and supporting mixed martial arts. What I am saying is I am not about fads. If I say that any style is complete, I would be lying. Those people who love mixed martial arts need to realize that it is not complete. They still have work to do. There are things in the cage that you cannot do in the street. Muay Thai is not the greatest style on earth. There are things that they do that will not work in the street. The same thing, yes, does apply to karate. But to think that hard style karate is ineffective and that it is useless is a lie. History has shown it to be extremely powerful, and it has shown that the people who do it well do a lot of damage. Uma Fight Camp, Safe Carmen. Train hard, train smart. See you next video.